Are you studying for the CPA exam? Are you tired of dry CPA review courses that are text heavy and make it challenging to really follow what's going on? Well, before we dive into this video, I want to say if you like the visual learning approach that we take, you could check out Universal CPA Review's Visual Learning CPA Review course and start a free trial today. You could do this by going to www.universalcpareview.com or by simply clicking on the link in the description of this video. Universal CPA Review offers animated video lectures, study guides, practice questions that include task-based simulations, and the best part is every single one of these practice questions come with side-by-side -side video explanations, so it's like having a tutor by your side. All right, booyah, let's get to the good stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at a pretty basic example, but this is something that you can very easily see in a multiple choice question on the exam. Okay, so Sinbad Corp is reporting $480,000 of pre-tax financial income and $470,000 of taxable income in year one. Okay, so uh-oh, we have a difference. All right, so why the difference? So the difference between book and tax income is going to get attributed to the method of depreciation that is applied to machinery that had an original cost of $50,000, no salvage value, and it also had an estimated useful life of five years. Okay, so the company depreciated the machinery using the straight line method on the income statement while using the double declining balance method on the tax return. Okay, so maybe they wanted to accelerate their depreciation and take a greater expense and lower that taxable income amount this year. So we're going to assume a 34% tax rate that is used for both the current and future period, which is going to make our life a lot easier. So we're going to now calculate the current income tax expense and any deferred tax asset or liability that can exist. Okay, so let's take a look at our mental map. Step one, we need to determine if a temporary difference exists. And a temporary difference does exist, right? Because depreciation methodology is a temporary difference. This is something that will reverse in the future, right? At the end of the day, we're going to depreciate this asset all the way down to zero on both the tax return and the income statement. Okay, so we know that the temporary difference is $10,000, right? Even if we think about it, the $50,000 getting depreciated straight line over five years would be a depreciation expense of $10,000 per year on the income statement. Whereas in year one on the tax return, the double declining balance method would indicate that the depreciation expense would now be $20,000. Okay, so we have this $10,000 difference, which is going to lead to these two different taxable income amounts. Okay, so now that we understand our $10,000 difference, we can move on to step two, which is calculating the current income tax expense, right? This is the tax liability getting reported on the tax return. So we could take the $470,000 that we have determined and we can multiply it by our 34% rate. That's going to give us a current income tax expense of $159,800. Okay, so now step three means we're going to take our temporary difference and we're going to multiply this by that same enacted rate. Okay, so 10,000 times 34% gives us a $3,400 deferred tax. What? Deferred tax liability. Why is this a deferred tax liability? Well, previously we said that we have a lower taxable income amount than what's reported on the income statement. Okay, so we might be thinking, great, we have less taxes to pay today. But that doesn't mean that this isn't taxable income that won't eventually get taxed, right? This is going to get reversed. Eventually this expense amount is going to get recognized on the income statement, which means we're going to have less of an expense to work with for future taxable periods. Okay, so the IRS is going to get their money which makes this an amount that is owed in the future. Okay, so 3,400 represents our deferred tax liability. So now when calculating step four, the total income tax expense or the income tax expense that is reported in the financial statements, we remember that we're going to add the deferred tax liability by the current income tax expense. Okay, so now we have another situation where Sinbad Corp leased part of its commercial warehouses to outside third parties in year one. Okay, so Sinbad Corp is going to be the landlord. All right, so during year one, Sinbad reported $350,000 of pre-tax financial income and $370,000 of taxable income. So why the difference? The difference between book and tax income is attributed to the fact that one of Sinbad's tenants prepaid three months rent in the amount of $30,000 on December 1st, year one. 
Okay, so again, we want to determine the current income tax expense and any deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability that may exist on December 31st, year one. Okay, so how do we know? Well, what we're saying here is that we have a higher taxable income amount than what is getting reported on the income statement. So that means we're paying more tax today, which means we're going to have a benefit in the future. And that benefit will be due to the fact that eventually we're going to recognize all of this income. We already recognized it when it was paid on the tax return, and we're going to recognize it when it is earned after January and February pass, and we can recognize this as income in year two. All right, but we're talking about year one. So step one, we already determined the temporary difference of $20,000. Now in step two, we could take our tax income of $370,000 and multiply it by that 34% rate. Okay, so our current income tax expense is going to be $125,800. We have a deferred tax asset, right, this benefit that we're going to enjoy in future periods in the amount of $6,800. So because this is a deferred tax asset, we're going to take the $125,000 current income tax expense and we're going to reduce it by the deferred tax asset that we calculated, which is going to give us the total tax expense amount that is reported on the income statement. Right, We have the tax expense from the current period and the deferred portion. Ooh, let's take a quick break and catch our breath. If you like what you see in this video, well, you're not the only one. Many students who've studied with Universal CP Review have found a ton of success. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself by taking a look at our reviews on Trustpilot. Trustpilot is the most legitimate third-party review site that ensures that our reviews are completely valid. Universal CP Review is not only the best CPA exam study option for visual learners, but it's also the most cost-effective option out there. So if you've already spent thousands of dollars on other CPA review courses, we totally understand and we want to help you out. So take a look at our free seven day trial to see if Universal CPA Review is a good fit for you. You can check out our free trial by going to www.universalcpareview.com or simply by clicking on the link in the description of this video.